The future is here. It's called Heart on My Sleeve. It's already hit 9 million views on TikTok and 250,000 streams on Spotify, but the record industry is not amused. Universal Music Group is asking streaming services to block AI companies from accessing its music. There's a major conspiracy that this Drake AI song was possibly a plant from inside of the music industry and Yokai did some investigation on who he thinks it might be. Check this out and we'll tell you why. So this is him investigating this entire video. We'll put it in the description below, but he's investigating going through profiles to figure out who he think this person is. And now he thinks he knows exactly who it is and doing a comparison towards the person in real life and this ghost writer profile that dropped the song by zooming in. And they even use some of the same captions in their videos. Coincidence? No. Def definitely not this is the guy <laughs> but that begs the question so who does he think the guy is he thinks the guy is none other than jake so if you look at jake jake has 31.6 million monthly listeners that's a shit ton of monthly listeners so you have a huge artist now if you don't know jake's background jake started off on tiktok he popped he would do a lot of videos with his mom some skit style videos so if y'all don't think tiktok can create some real results first of all this is another one of those examples 31 million listen monthly listeners that ain't no joke he is now the 111th most listened to artist on spotify in the world right now with that being said he thinks he did it i'm gonna play why uh, the angles that Yokai considered in this conspiracy of why Jake may have done this. He throw on a bed sheet, record himself listening to his own AI generated Drake song, and then post it to an anonymous account. More importantly, why would he want to pay young Boba to post it on TikTok when he himself has over 11 million followers on the platform? If he's really doing this to turn the industry upside down like he says he is, why wouldn't he post this on his main? All right, that's a bullshit narrative. I'll I'll speak on that in a second though. Main account where he has his biggest platform. Well, maybe he was afraid of the legal consequences, but surely he has to know that nothing online is truly anonymous. I mean, if I can track him down, surely the legal team of a major record label can too. That's a fair point. That's a fair point. You got a sole individual in his bedroom. And I don't know, I think it took him, what, how many, how long do you say? He didn't really say it. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like a week or so. Yeah, a week or so to figure it out. Okay. Or, you know, and the record labels did come down on this. Yeah, they did. Like, yeah. They, 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 they brought it, they got taken down. You don't really see this game being played anymore. The record labels came at this pretty hard. And, you know, I got some thoughts on that too. You know, maybe he was just afraid of what his audience would think. After all, AI music is pretty controversial and TikTok comment sections aren't exactly known for being civil. My only do you think big artists are afraid to do anything AI driven in terms of art, uh, their music just because the audience feel like we're culturally not in the space? Because there are a lot of people who are voicing it. Yeah, oh, this is this fake thing. It's, yeah. it's taking over. It's ruining the art. Do you think he would be one of those people or any big artists are feeling like that? I think so. I think they're probably more afraid of industry backlash than public backlash. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of the, the the major industry still hasn't really taken to it. Like it's completely separate. But there's a video of um the producer guru calling out. I think it's Timbaland or somebody that. Oh yeah. Wants to, like I saw, saw that story. Timbaland yeah. wants to do post humans post humans AI uh, AI songs. Yeah. And he's investing in a company where hey yeah these are yeah. dead people and we're gonna drop music and do different releases around this artist and your young guru is like ah eh. corny yeah that's corny, corny that, that's yeah. that's not cool bro like you fucking with the art yeah so so, so i think like industry wise like i think fan wise like the fans seem to love it you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. the consumer base is all for it but industry wise they still are trying how, to how do you it. feel about new people how do you feel about new music from dead people yeah, i'm not gonna actively so if somebody dropped some yes. ai music from your favorite yes. artist elvis yes yes, yes. <laughs> i have a whole think? i have a whole ai juice world playlist on youtube okay i have a whole ai x playlist mm -hmm. on youtube wow so yes yeah, so i'm the wrong person as i like it no know? i ain't say that that's exactly <laughs> what we want to hear that's the right that's the right person to talk to the only other guess is that maybe he just wanted to see what would happen i mean this situation really was unprecedented sure people had probably released music do you think he just wanted to see what was happening i think he just wanted to see what happened bro yeah <laughs> Like, all I think, right. I think, all right, so, I, all right, so, because we talked about it off, off camera. I have a couple of different points. I think okay. one, 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 
He has a TikToker background. Yeah. TikTokers are notorious for just doing shit and seeing what mm-hmm. happens. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of the whole model as a TikToker, right? Do something, see what happens. Two, he's in the music industry, mm-hmm. right? And I think he probably does really do songwriting. So, what is one of the, the biggest, not fuck yous, but like, let's say, like, biggest, one of the biggest things you can do in the music industry to get the attention of your peers is make some shit go. Mm-hmm. Everybody in the music industry knows this. No motherfuckers don't care about how hard you've been working for the last couple months what new achievements you've maybe done internally in your company or what personal growth you're going through. When is the last time you made some shit go? Yeah. And he got, he got, he got a big one, a big recent one. Right. So I think it might've just been a little bit of like inner industry competitive spirit kind of going on. Right. Like let me do some shit that nobody else has done and use it to kind of flip some attention for my operation. Cause even though like Yoko talks about how he isn't, publicly supporting it and talking about it i'd be willing to bet behind the scenes he was telling people like hey that was me you know what i'm saying like i did that shit see this is this is my problem one i do i don't say i believe that's him i can see that being him because it does have tiktoker all written all Mm -hmm. over it right yep because one not only do you have the video posted uh you got this concept you don't know who i am but the narrative of it all. Mm-hmm. And TikTokers at that size, they understand the par- power of narrative. Yep. And I wish I could find the actual original video or, or a, a copy of it. Because I want to read that narrative word for word. Let me see if I can find somebody who posted it. All right. So, yeah, he made the statement that I'm here to turn the industry upside down. Right. That's the type of narrative that people love to buy into on TikTok. Right. I'm here to turn the industry upside down by dropping this mysterious Drake and Weekend track, which honestly, I didn't think that was that it was that good. But a lot of people were like, oh, that shit bopped or whatever. I didn't think it was that good. And I felt like that was one of the weaker Drake sounds to me, um, to me like in terms of actual AI voices. And Weekend didn't sound shit like Weekend to me, personally. That's my personal opinion. But mm-hmm. that narrative, <laughs> come on. I understand that that'll get people to buy in everybody's always trying to overturn authority right and knock yeah. over knock down the industry because they've been treating our artists that were so many uh were so much great fans of horribly all these years right of course you're gonna get kids on tiktok to support something like that right yeah and they don't even know how like how has he turned the industry upside down i don't know but i'm here for it it's right so hard. It's so hard. what he did was leverage the same idea that Wall Street bets did. Anti-establishment. Mm, and right. we're going to yeah. overturn Wall Street. For y'all who, who don't know, there was a time where there was this, uh, this Reddit group. They were shorting stocks, yeah. GameStop, and what, like Radio Shack and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And, GameStop was the most famous yes. one. Yeah. And they had this whole Reddit <laughs> thread going crazy, right? Saying uh, to all bet on things and short stocks together because shorts work and you can easily you can actually manipulate and make things stocks fall if you have enough people begin to short something. Yep. Right. So, so they were actually leveraging the community to do that. But when you think about the hierarchy, the people who were running the group, they were using the people at the bottom by pushing this narrative. This whole, hey, yeah, we're about to take over Wall Street and outperform them da 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 and change the entire um you know ecosystem but really they're just profiting they're mm-hmm. making their bag in that period of time some of those people on the bottom end up getting stuck in their short positions and losing yep right getting too uh, too late got in too late because yep. it's easy to get people to buy in with the anti-establishment narrative so that's the same type of thing that he utilized to bring attention on top of the track because a lot of people dropped tracks yeah right a lot of people did some semi-anonymous stuff too yeah. but he utilized this narrative his understanding of tiktok i wonder there might have been some shares or some things like that that we might not know about either or whatever just because for it to go viral like that from ground zero eh, i don't know i'm saying i think right? so man i think so like he, yeah because he's a he's he's too big to have tried to kick this off at complete ground zero right <laughs> here's the other thing though again he could have just done it for fun yeah but this is why because I think he probably just did it more for fun. But here's the conspiracy. You got the people who are following this narrative of, yes, I'm here to turn the industry upside down. That would not be the truth. That's not how this shit actually works. The way this works is what just happened in real time. This got taken down. Yeah. Legal issues. Yeah. Right? And how, how things actually work is the controllers of an industry 
will encourage something like this happen to happen so they can create regulation. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. I see where you're going with it. So <laughs> if I'm at the label, I might want this to go. Yeah. Cause yo, this is taking over. This is doing too big. Do it too, too well. Our artists are being violated. Our assets are being misconstrued, misrepresented. We need to come down on this. And now all of the platforms have to figure out a way to acquiesce yeah. and build their systems to handle that. Right? Same thing when you thought about labels, felt uh, not just labels, companies pulling out of the advertisement for YouTube and you had the ad apocalypse for a period. Oh snap, we don't like our commercials being shown on this mm. type of material. Let's pull out. Hey, if you're enjoying this clip, let's take a quick second and be real with each other. We both know that most people don't want to put the sauce out there. However, we're trying to get out as much of it for free. And to do that, we need to have as many subscribers so we can be an attractive platform where people want to come and get a game. So if you want more content like this, if you want to support the No Labels Necessary movement, all you have to do is subscribe right now. FTX. A lot of people look at FTX. For y'all don't who don't know, FTX Trading Limited commonly known as FTX, is a bankrupt company <laughs> that formerly operated as a cryptocurrency exchange and crypto hedge fund. All right, there we go. That's FTX, right? So people in the crypto industry don't like how they misuse mm -hmm. crypto. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they are now being used as an example of why there should be regulation on crypto, Yep. right? And the whole thing about crypto is we don't have any regulation. That's like the whole sale of it. Yep. But we know government again and again wants to regulate it because we can't really profit as the big wigs on things that we cannot regulate. We can't truly control. It's the same reason why tobacco was legal and weed was illegal for a period of time. Right. Part of it was we don't have control over this whole thing. So you can't just pop up with some something that's competitive to the thing that we already are selling and we control. Yeah. But then it's like. Then it begs the question of have they fucked up? Because also that the labels, if we're saying that they possibly use it to push regulation forward faster, there was before this happened, there wasn't really too much consumer feedback around it, right? Like consumers didn't really have like an opinion. It was kind of like a like mm -hmm. the boogeyman. Like you heard about it, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Some rough samples floating like, like everything we had heard AI before was kind of like a joke. Like it's like, oh, this is cool, I can see where it yeah. can go. This one was the one that in my head kind of flipped consumer perspective around AI, right? Because it's like, it's the, I remember listening to it, I'm like, man, this is the first Drake AI cover I've heard where like the voice doesn't sound super robotic. Like, it, like and that was like, it had only been like two weeks since the, the other one I heard. So I'm like, this shit moving fast. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like two weeks ago, this shit sounded like, like a robot. And then it kind of sounds like 85% more like Drake. So, but it pushed consumer discourse for it faster. And now you see lots of fans making their own AI covers and, you know what I'm saying, experimenting with their, their own shit. And like, I've, I've seen like small YouTube channels pop up where they're making AI covers. And so how know, does that fuck things up though? Because the music industry always has to, not always, but most of the time has to bend to the will of the fans. And if the fans start advocating for it and fighting for it, then eventually it's, it's gonna happen, right? So it's gonna have to be more AI music. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, exactly. So, or, or, or things are gonna go the way, of, the way of Napster again, you know what I'm saying? Like, and the music industry is scared of, of Napster 3.0, you know what I'm saying? I think that only helps. In the conspiracy of encouraging this to exist, right? Yeah. Because one, bam, I push for the need for regulation on this. Two, I market that this is a possibility. Yeah. So three, when all the fans and people want to create more of it, by that time I'm working on or already have started to develop a way for them to do exactly what they want to do and me be able to monetize or control how it happens. Yeah. All right. And then just the taste of it all, that desire, from what I've seen, a lot of labels have been wanting that to occur mm. right not not even from a standpoint of like just ai music in this particular framework but you know how TikTok in australia they did a test where they got rid of like the top 40 oh, yeah. or top 100 like all their the labels music maybe yeah. for universal somebody i can't remember but then they only went and they tested ai generated music yeah a lot of these companies want to figure out how can we do music just off of ai because it's lower cost and we don't have to deal with artists. So That's even risk. that kind of helps that that, yeah. that standpoint.
I like eh. now again, were they pulling strings beyond behind this? We don't know. You know what I mean? We have no idea. I am apt to think, eh, your boy Jake was just joking. If it was Jake, you know what I mean? But I mean, maybe that was why he was a good choice. Because exactly. he was a jokester and people don't take the jokester serious. They're like, oh, I can see him just playing around. Because then it'd be like, it, it's really just a high level influencer campaign. Mm. Hey, we got this cool idea. Like I said, push things forward. Who's the perfect? Because I would think about it like, yo, if we got caught, who, who would go down without any backlash? Jake. Nobody's going to pass Jake. If the truth came out, Jake, Jake going to be better off for it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. He actually does help yeah. his brain. Yeah, exactly. Oh, man, he just did another successful trick. And, yeah, he's so funny. People yeah. are like, man, that song's kind of hard. You're right. Yeah. You can write rap bars and pop. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So it's like he has nothing to lose whether it's true or not. You know what I'm saying? Like Either way, he's good. Yeah, I guess we'd have to follow the legal case. So before we close this out, let's just see if there's an update on the legal side. All right, look, check this out, man. We just, come on, look at what we just came across. Universal Music Group told Billboard magazine that the viral postings demonstrate why platforms have a fundamental legal and eth ethical responsibility to prevent the use of their services in ways that harm artists. Does that not sound like regulation? It do sound like right? regulation. Some man. sort of, regula like, of regulation like it. or... Mm, ah, maintenance or whatever, right? And they and they love they the labels love to act like they're on artist side that harm artists. No, that harm our stakeholders, our investors, bro. Y'all know what y'all talking about. But then check this out. UMG declined to clarify whether it had sent a formal take down down request to streaming services and such social media sites. Now, why wouldn't you just put out there if you sit down, you put a formal request? All right, y'all are doing something illegal. You usually want people to know that you sent a takedown request. Sounds weird to not. Yeah, brag about that. Yeah, brag about it or yeah. tell them that. You know what I mean? So if you didn't yeah. send one, because I guess maybe yeah. if you did, I don't know all the legal, you know, process. But a lot of times, you know, TMZ, all these pay, uh, sites, they find the legal documentation. So I guess that would also uh, cause people to look yeah. for it. So yeah. we're not going to even talk about that. Because y'all not really doing it. That's what yeah. that says. Y'all aren't doing it. How come y'all aren't doing it? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? How come y'all aren't doing it? D did y'all really make this happen? Here's a little bit more on that angle. We're encouraged by the engagement of our platform partners on these issues as they recognize they need to be part of the solution. Again, they're saying, hey, bro, y'all got to regulate this. Y'all got to stop this in some form or fashion. It might not be able to be legally regulated first, but we can get our partners. You know what I mean? We can put some pressure on them, boys. For them to like stop this, put some stoppage on it. Last week, UMG urged streaming platforms to block AI companies from accessing their label songs. The Financial Times reported saying that it had become aware that certain services had been trained on copyrighted music without obtaining the required consents and warned the platforms, we will not hesitate to take steps to protect our rights and those of our artists. Here's the last thing I want to check. What label is he signed to? A wall. A wall. He said A wall like Sega. That's yeah, funny. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even peep it until you said that. <laughs> that's funny. But that's so that's the one hole in this. Because isn't A wall owned by Sony, not UMG? Yeah, yeah. They're owned by Sony. Yeah, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, get where you're going. Okay. There, there's the one hole. However, you know, man, we can't say there, there, there might be some collusion. <laughs> throw them off the scent. Hey, Jacory, you get your boys to do this, and then we gonna come down on it. Use our artists, so that way you know yeah. it, it's thrown off. But Wait, that's click, that's click the whole on, I see. Yeah, click on that first question. Is Jake signed a wall? Maybe, maybe. Is, is Jake signed a wall? Uh, Jake signed a wall distribution company. So me mute. Yo, Sony Entertainment owns. Goddamn. Yeah. So that's the whole. To be continued. This is yet another episode of No Labels <laughs> Necessary <laughs> podcast. Where is the clip? Y'all let us know what y'all think. Interesting on the least. I'm Brandon Sean. And I'm Corey. And we out. Peace.